thank you very much. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong. This is Pointless, the quiz show where lower scores mean more chance of winning. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> Welcome back, Helen and Chris. You were on the show last time. Everyone gets two chances to reach the final, and this is your last chance. Remind us how you did. Badly. Very, very <laughs> badly. <laughs> badly. What, what, what did for you? Those comic books. Yeah, it was tough, though. That was a really it tough category. Tough, yes. If Especially... it happens to be something you know nothing about, like me. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, very good. OK, well, best of luck this afternoon. Uh, and welcome back, Stephen and Astrid. You were also on the show last time. Remind us how you did. Um, got to the head-to-head, -head, mm -hmm. but um, unfortunately, the Swiss were our issue. <laughs> um, and what was, the other, what was the other question that did for you? Duran Duran. Duran Duran. Around before our time, supposedly. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, best of luck this afternoon. Scott and Louise, welcome to you two. How do you two know each other? We're married. <laughs> <laughs> good Lord. Yes, I'm we are. I'm delighted to hear that. Well done. Very good. Where are you from? Uh, we're from Edinburgh. You don't sound like you're from Edinburgh, no, but there you know that's... I know. It's a growing up in the northwest that did it. Right. And moving back up to Edinburgh in 2002. Very good. Well, best of luck to you this afternoon. I hope you do very well indeed. And finally, welcome to Mark and Pete. How do you two know each other? Um, we work together. Mark works for me. <laughs> <laughs> very proprietorially said. Um, what do you do? Um, I'm a quality health, safety, environmental manager, um, and Mark is my quality manager. Do, would this show pass the quality test, would it? Mm. Yeah, you see? We'll that's, see. That's your junior saying that. <laughs> Didn't even have to go up to the, to the head man. <laughs> anyway, we'll find out more about you all throughout the show. But before we go any further, just one more person to introduce. He is the man who knows it all, quite literally. My pointless friend, Richard. You know it all. <laughs> what kind of a show have we got? Uh, great show. We've got two really good returning couples. I think Helen and Chris, I think, would like to go a little bit further than they did last time. And Stephen and Astrid. Whenever we have sort of student-y types, I know you're not students anymore, but you know what, you might as well be for anybody over the age of 30. <laughs> They're so desperate to win, aren't they? You can see it. Look we need the money. Look at Stephen, <laughs> collar up, ready to go. He is ready <laughs> to go. Uh, now, we've put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers that they didn't get. The fewer people who got the answer, the fewer points awarded and the better chance of winning. So to stay in the game with a chance to win our jackpot, our players need to score as few points as they possibly can. Have you got that? What everyone's looking to do is to find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add 250 quid to the jackpot. No one won the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £3,000. There we are. Very good. Let's play Pointless. Now, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. OK, guys, the first category this afternoon is... Fruit. Fruit. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many citrus fruits as they could. Richard? Yeah, quite simply, the correct answers in this round are all citrus fruits. OK, thank you very much. Right, Helen and Chris, you all drew lots before the show, and today you go first. And this round, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers on the board in each pass. Now, the first set of seven answers is... Mandarin, Tangelo, Kiyomi, Lind, Grapefruit, Lemon, Ugly Fruit. And I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, but you have to be very careful because there's also at least one incorrect answer among those seven. Pick one of those and you'll score the maximum of 100 points. Chris, you stepped up to be the first person to answer this. I have a choice. How's your fruit? <laughs> Good. I, but I didn't take a chance last time, so I'm going to take a chance this time and go for Tangelo. OK, very good. Tangelo. Let's see if it is correct. If it is, let's see how many people said Tangelo. It's correct, Chris. Look at that. Very impressive answer indeed, Chris. That scored you one point. Only one person said Tangelo. Richard? Yes, very, very good answer. As you say, it's, it's a hybrid citrus fruit. 
I'm guessing it's a mix between a tangerine and a marshmallow. I don't know. <laughs> Very good answer. Stephen. Stephen, there are six left on the board there. Tangelo has, has been snatched. Um, I want to take a gamble because there's a you few quite obvious ones. And you have to. You have to. Fun. There is at least a one pointless answer exactly. in there. There is at least one incorrect answer in there. I'm going to go ugly fruit. You're going to go ugly fruit. Splendid. All right, let's see if that's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Ugly fruit. It's correct. Oh. Down it goes. Oh. Six. Very good answer. Richard, ugly fruit. Uh, yeah, really, really good answer, Stephen. The ugly fruit, uh, also known as the hoogly. Now, I got, here's a suggestion to the ugly fruit marketing board. Call it a hoogly. <laughs> anyway, Louise, <laughs> we are looking for citrus fruit. Mm. What do you think? Ugly has gone. Tangelo has gone. Yeah. There's still a pointless answer. They've actually helped you here. They've cleared the board of non-pointless answers. They have. And it's whether to take the risk or go with a safe answer. Oh, I don't know what to do. Um... Well, I'm going to give you my penneth. I'm mm. going to say the scores are one and six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's... You might as well take a risk, because a high score at this stage might be the same as getting an incorrect answer, almost. I'll take the risk. Or will Scott, I? fantastic poker face from Scott, not giving anything <laughs> away. No, I'm not going to take the risk. Not going to take the no, risk? No, I'm not. I'm not. Scott's still not giving... Oh, no, frown. <laughs> frown from Scott. OK, you're not taking those. What are I'm you going to do? I'm going to go for Mandarin. OK, Mandarin. A Mandarin. OK, let's see how many people said Mandarin. It's right. It's not bad. 20. Oh, wow. <laughs> 20 people said Mandarin. That gives you a score of 20. Richard. Yes, Mandarin. The name covers a whole, a whole group of citrus fruits. Citrus reticulata. Wow. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> so, we are looking for citrus fruit. Mark. Hello. You have a choice of four. There they are, neatly grouped in the middle. I'm going to gamble. OK, that's good to do. But I don't know with what. For no reason. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some lind? Everything's telling me to say Kiyomi, but then there's something squeeze obviously of, talking. Squeeze of lind in that? I know. <laughs> lind, lind sounds quite harsh. Oh, I tell you what, I've got some lovely Kiyomi. <laughs> oh, they're green as well. They yeah, yeah, I can gone. see them as being green, yeah. you see? Because mm. lind sounds quite harsh. Kiyomi. Mm. Oh, I hope I haven't made you say that. <laughs> Kiyomi. <laughs> Oh, maybe I've just sold you a lemon. <laughs> oh. Kiyomi. All right, let's see if it's right. Let's see if it's right, and please, can it be? Um, is it correct? If it is, how many people said it? Kiyomi. That's right! <laughs> oh, that's going a long way down. Yay! Well done, Mark. That's a pointless answer. It adds 250 quid to today's jackpot. Takes the total up to £3,250. <laughs> that scores you no points. Our first pointless of the series. Richard? Uh, yeah, very, very good answer. The Kiyomi. It's a, it's a Japanese citrus fruit. It's lovely with a gin and tonic. Lovely gin and Kiyomi juice. Oh, oh lovely. lovely. But there's Kiyomi zest. Yeah. In a salad dressing. Lovely Kiyomi cheesecake. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Not Lind. Don't have that. Yeah. <laughs> Lind, are you mad? Well, should we take a look at the other answers? There's, there's two obvious right answers there, which are grapefruit, which would have scored you 54. Lemon would have got you a huge uh, 95 points. Lind uh, is an incorrect answer. Dr James Lind was the man who demonstrated the link between uh, vitamin C and scurvy. How about that for highbrow? Why haven't they named a fruit after him? They should have, shouldn't that they? Man, is, that man is hankering to have a fruit named after him. A citrus fruit, nice bitter one. <laughs> OK, let's take a look at the scores. We're halfway through the round. Very impressive scoreboard. See, Scott and Louise, I'd have thought 20 was a pretty good score. Normally. Normally. That was reckoning without this lot. You've got, uh, obviously, you've got Mark and Pete on nothing. Fantastic low score from them. Helen and Chris on one. Stephen Astrid on six. Yeah, everything very much to play for, but Scott, pressure on you to uh, take a bit of a risk and see if you can find a pointless answer. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? 
OK, we're going to put seven more answers up on the board. We are looking for citrus fruit. And here are your seven possibilities. Kumquat, Satsuma, Lime, Oroblanco, Pomelo, Miranda, Mineola. Kumquat, Satsuma, Lime, Oroblanco, Pomelo, Miranda, Mineola. Again, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, and at least one of those answers is incorrect. So choose very carefully. Pete, you are currently, of course, our low scorers on nothing. If you score 19 or less, you are definitely through to the next round. OK. I think that kumquat is a citrus fruit. OK, you're going to go with kumquat. Yeah. Let's see if that is a correct answer. And let's see how many people said it. There is your red line. Below that red line, you are through to the next round. Kumquat. Correct. <laughs> Very good. Look at that, six. Six people said kumquat. That scores you six, gives you a total of six. Richard? Yeah, kumquat, very good answer. Kumquat is that fruit. Wherever you, whenever you go somewhere posh or around to someone else's house and you think, what's that fruit? That's a kumquat. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it? Sorry, what is a citrus fruit, Richard? Uh, it's any of the edible fruits of the genus uh, citrus that have a, a pulpy endocarp and a firm exocarp. Yeah, you feel like that, that, it, it, seem, it seems obvious, but um, <laughs> there we are. Scott, let's hope that helps you. You are our <laughs> front runners, you're our high scorers on 20. You have to score as low as you possibly can to make sure you stay in the game. I am going to just throw it all out there and go Miranda. You're going to go Miranda on a whim? On a whim. Let's see if Miranda is correct, and if it is, how many people said it? Bad luck. I'm afraid Miranda is an incorrect answer and scores you the maximum of 100 points, taking your total up to an unbeatable, I'm afraid, 120. Richard? Yeah, sorry, Scott. It does sound like a citrus fruit, and, of course, Karma Miranda famously wore a, a fruit hat. So it's a, it's a slightly less highbrow wrong answer than Lind, but it, it's still a wrong answer, I'm afraid. Oh, bad luck. Astrid, you are currently on six. Doesn't matter what you say, you are through to the next round. So, it's an open field. Why not pick out the pointless answer in there? Since I can't really go wrong, um, I might as well go for Oro Blanco. Why not? Oro Blanco. It's going to be a sort of white-fleshed yeah. thing, mm -hmm. isn't it? Probably. What does Oro mean? Citrus, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Bitter fruit. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's see if it's a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Oro Blanco. Oh, it's good. I have a good feeling about this. Yeah, down it goes. Yes, look at that. Well done, you. It's our second pointless answer this round, and indeed this series, and it adds another £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total to £3,500. Very well done. And, of course, it scores you nothing, leaving your score at six. Richard, Oro Blanco. Yeah, very, very good answer. It's also known as Sweetie. It has a, uh, has a pulpy endocarp and a firm exocarp. It's yeah. a citrus fruit. That's, a, that's how you tell in the supermarket. <laughs> Just, that's what you're doing. You're, you're, if you're in a supermarket feeling the fruit, that you're essentially looking to see if it's got a firm exocarp and a, uh, a pulpy endocarp. Endocarp. So if someone tells you not to do it, just let them know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Touch a pulpy end of myself earlier, but uh, it's fine. It's fine now. <clears throat> well, many congratulations, Astrid. You wait ages for a pointless answer to come along, and two in the same round. Absurd. OK, Helen and Chris, you were on one, a very impressive low score. It doesn't matter what you score now, because even if you score 100, you'll never overtake Scott and Louise on their 120. There might very, very well be another pointless answer on that board. Um, I know Satsuma, Lime and Pomelo are definitely fruits. I think Mineola is a fruit anyway, but that's the one I'm not sure about, so that's the one I will go for. Very good Mineola. indeed. Mineola. Let's see if it's a right answer, and maybe it's another pointless, maybe it'll add another 250 quid to our jackpot. Who knows? It's correct. 
And it goes. It is another point to answer. Fantastic, that's another point to answer. Another £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to a whopping £3,750. <laughs> and it scores you nothing, leaving you with a total of one. Very impressive indeed. Richard. Uh, yeah, that's a very, very good answer. It's such an obscure fruit, it's actually uh, a variety of the tangelo. And tangelo only scored one point uh, for Chris in the last round, so really, really good answer. It's a bell-shaped fruit. Uh, let's take a look at um, the others. Uh, Satsuma, obviously that would have got you uh, 31 points. Lime, that would have scored you a whopping 84. And uh, Pomelo, what do you think, Alexander? Fruit or not fruit? Oh, I think, I, oh, I think it's got to be a fruit, surely. Come on, surely. But... We've already had two pointlesses. Maybe it's not a fruit, pomelo. I'm going to say not a fruit. Well, Helen already told us it absolutely is a fruit, but would have oh. only scored you uh, five points, so well done if you got that at home. Nice. Very good answer. Very good. Mm. All right, thank you very much, Richard. So at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm sorry to say it's Scott and Louise. Oh, oh bad luck. I mean, you did everything right there, apart from... Answer. Your tactics were spot on, though. I mean, no, you you had to you had to play it carefully. I'll shut up. Anyway, <laughs> listen. Uh, great shame to say goodbye to you so early on, but don't worry. We will see you again next time. Every pair gets two shots at the pointless final. Um, hopefully, you'll do even better then. <laughs> Thanks very much for playing. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. It's time now to find out which two teams will be going through to the head-to-head -head of the chance to reach the pointless final. The category for round two is... Children's literature. Children's literature. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? Yes, go first. And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. And the question is... Children's books and their characters. Children's books and their characters. This is a brand new round on Pointless. We're about to show you some characters from children's literature. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to tell us which books they appear in. Richard. We're going to show you the names of six characters from children's literature, and you need to tell us the book that they appeared in. If they're in a series of books, just the first book uh, will we'll, we'll do. As always, there are some obvious ones there. If you get those, they'll get you a lot of points. There's some obscure ones, though, that will score you very few points. That's what you want to do. Uh, if you get a wrong answer to any of these, you'll score 100 points. At home, see if you can get all six of them. OK, thank you very much. The first six are... Wilbur the Pig, Pongo, Hermione Granger, Aslan, Jim Hawkins, Posey Fossil. OK, we are looking for the books that these characters appear in. Chris. Hermione Granger, I guess, Daniel, um, Harry Potter. God, I didn't know what you were going to say there. <laughs> I was going to say Dennis Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Hermione Granger, Harry Potter, you're saying. Let's see if it's a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. It's right. Oh, again. Oh, dear. Bad luck. That's a high score there, Chris. That scores you 80. Yeah, of course, it appears in, uh, in all of the Harry Potter series of books. And, you know, if, if you don't know them, it's better to go for an obvious one than, uh, than risk a wrong answer. Quite right. Astrid. Astrid, what are your hobbies, Astrid? I'm, well, I like watching films, not children's films, unfortunately. Um, or reading children's books, so... But you, presumably you were, you must have been a child at, at, at some stage. <laughs> I was, but I didn't grow up in England, so I don't know any of these. Ah. That's a problem. I see. Where did you grow up? In Hong Kong. So you only read books. Cantonese children's <laughs> books? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, I'm really hoping Pongo is the same Pongo as 101 Dalmatians, but I don't know. So I'm going to go okay, for that. OK, you're going to go for that. 101 Dalmatians, Pongo. Let's see if that's a correct answer. And if it is, how many people knew that answer? Pongo. Well, it's right. It's not terrible. 27. 
27 people knew that. That scores you 27 points. Richard, Pongo. Yeah, Pongo, very good answer. Pongo and Mrs Pongo are the, the pair of Dalmatians who live with Mr and Mrs Dearly. Thank you very much, Richard, for that. <clears throat> Mark, mm. children's literature. Really? No. Really, really? Not at all. I know quite a lot of adults read quite a lot of children's literature, don't they? I mean, a few of these books, I'm pretty sure. I recognise Aslan, but I don't know where from. It's the only one I've heard of. And I'm... I'll go with... Jungle Book. You're going Jungle Book, Aslan. OK. Let's see if that's a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Aslan, the Jungle Book. <laughs> Bad luck, I'm afraid. That is an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Richard? Aslan. Yeah, uh, Aslan the lion, and he, he's the central character in the Chronicles of Narnia, so Lion, the Witch of the Wardrobe, and uh, all of those. Uh, let's take a look uh, through the rest of them here. Um, Alexander, do you recognise any of those names? Yeah, Jim Hawkins, I can give you Treasure Island. Absolutely right, would have got you 37 points. Uh, Wilbur, Wilbur the pig. pig, I can give you Charlotte's Web. It is Charlotte's Web, yeah, he's, uh, Charlotte saves him, doesn't she? Uh, 18 points, and Posey Posy Fossil. Posey Fossil? Oh... Little women, I don't know, God knows. <laughs> uh, Posey Fossil is from Ballet Shoes, Noel Streetfield's Ballet oh. Shoes, where she is adopted by an eccentric archaeologist. It would have been a pointless answer, so very, very well done if you got that at home. Very good. OK, well, let's take a look at the scores. We're halfway through the round. It's been a high-scoring round, this one. Mark and Pete can vouch for that. Yes, 100 points there. You are our high scores. You're not that far ahead of the field, though. Helen and Chris not too far behind you on 80. <laughs> Bad luck. You see, Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter, you might as well make a mistake. You might as well get it incorrect. It's going to be a Harry <laughs> Potter Treasure thing. Island would be more popular, you see, I know. I I'd have thought know. you might have known Treasure Island. Wrong, you just be? forgot. Yeah, just... It's, you know, it's, 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 easy, it's easily done. And um, Stephen and Astrid, 27. That's, that's really very impressive indeed, particularly considering it was a, it was a bit of a punt. Um, OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> right, we're going to put six more characters from children's literature on the board. And we have got... Mowgli, Augustus Gloop, Marigold Westwood... Ratty, Pandora, Braithwaite, Mrs. Do as you would be done by. Pete. Nodding, just taking it all in, deciding which of those you're going to go for of the many you have at your fingertips. Yeah, there's a couple of quite easy ones on there. Yeah. Um, I'll go for Ratty. All right. What's he from? <sighs> Tales of the Riverbank. Your score is 100. You have to try and score as low as you possibly can with this. You are the high scorers. Let's see if Tales from the Riverbank is correct, and if it is, how many people said it? Bad luck, unfortunately. That is an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points, taking your total up to a pretty impressive 200. Richard. Uh, yeah, it tells you the riverbank, unfortunately, not the name of a book. I can't say what the name of the book is in case it, uh, one of the other pairs wants to uh, say it, but we'll clear all that up at the end of the round. OK, very deftly done, Richard. Stephen. Pressure off. A little um, bit of pressure off. Um, so you could say I can you afford are, to embarrass you, myself. Yes, you can afford <laughs> to embarrass yourself or indeed cover yourself in glory because uh, Pete and Mark have got 200. Even if you score 100 points, uh, there's no way you'll ever overtake their high score. So, yes, take okay. your pick. Um, Augustus Gloop, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Augustus Gloop, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is what you are saying. Uh, let's see how many people said that. Augustus Gloop, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> 29. 29 people said that. Scores you 29, takes your total up to 56. Richard? Yeah, very good. Safely through Augustus Gloop, the first uh, child to win one of the golden tickets. OK, thank you very much. And finally, Helen. Again, you can do no wrong. Yes. For, for the reason I said earlier, you'll never overtake the high score of Pete and Mark. So go in there and have well, some the, fun. 
there's, there's two I know and yep. one I'm not sure about, so I might as well go for the one I'm not sure about. Good for you, um, yes. Pandora Braithwaite, Adrian Mole. All right, let's see if that's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Pandora Braithwaite. It's correct. Yeah. Very good indeed. 19 people knew that. Scores you 19, takes your total to 99. Oh, dear, Richard, that means you're going to ask me these uh, to, to tidy up, aren't you? I am, yeah. Let's see if anybody at home got all six of these. Um, so, Mowgli. Jungle Book. Jungle Book, exactly right, would have got you 71 points. Uh, Ratty. Wind in the Willows. Is the Wind of the Willows, yeah. Tales from the River Banks, a film, TV series, but it's not, it's not the name of the book. Sorry, guys, that would have got you 47 points. Uh, Mrs. Do As You Would Be Done By. I think. Is it The Water Babies? It is The Water Babies. Ah. Very, very well done. And Marigold Westwood. I have no idea. Well, well done if you got this at home, so it's a pointless answer. She's from the illustrated mum by the wonderful Jacqueline Wilson. Pointless answer. Thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm sorry to say it's Mark and Pete. Bad luck, guys. That was, uh, that was a tough round mm. for you, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It was. Were there any you're now kicking yourself over? Or... No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's good. That's good. You can go out with your heads held high. Well, we say goodbye to you for now. Of course, we will see you again next time. Everyone gets two chances to come through to our pointless final. So we'll look forward to seeing you then. Thanks very much for playing. Cheers. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> well, we've already said goodbye to two teams. It's now time to find out which of our remaining two will be playing for today's jackpot, which currently stands, in case you'd forgotten, at £3,750. <laughs> Very impressive. Well done, Stephen, Astrid, Helen and Chris. You are now going head-to-head -head in the best of three questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer. You are now allowed to confer. That's the main thing. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question. Now, the pair with the best of three will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Spanish costas as they could. Spanish costas. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any of the eight costas that famously make up the Mediterranean coast of Spain. OK. Stephen and Astrid, because you've played the best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. OK. We are looking for Spanish costas. Oh, there was three Okay. OK, you've got one. Yeah. Indeed. Um, I don't think it'll be particularly uh, low scoring. Uh, Costa Blanca. Costa Blanca. Yeah. OK, thank you very much. Yeah. Helen and Chris, you've found a Costa. Yes, again, they're going to be quite high scoring. Um, Costa Blanca is what I would have chosen out of my three. <laughs> we know we say, yes. <laughs> so this time we'll go for Costa Brava. Costa Brava. Yeah. OK, Costa Brava, Costa Blanca. In the order they were given, Stephen and Astrid, Costa Blanca. Let's see how many people said that. Well, it's right. It's right. 32. 32. You, are, you, are you happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. At, least, at least it's right. <laughs> yeah, it's right. It's actually a costa. Yeah, right. it is a costa. It is a costa and it scored you 32. Not bad at all. OK, Costa Brava, Helen and Chris have said. Let's see how many people said Costa Brava. Also correct. Oh! That's scored 38, so that point goes to Stephen and Astrid. Richard? Uh, yeah, very well played. There were actually five answers that uh, would have beaten them. Let's take a look at all the Spanish costas. Right at the bottom, the Costa del Azahar was a pointless answer, so very well done if, uh, if you got that, or if you're going there this summer, it should be quiet. Uh, <laughs> as is the Costa Calida, the Costa Tropical, which is the, the tropical coast in English. Uh, Costa Almeria would have got you six points. These would all have won. Costa Dorada, and then we've got the big three there. You've got Costa Blanca, Costa Brava, and Costa del Sol. Thanks very much, Richard. OK, Helen and Chris, you have to win this point. 
Otherwise, Stephen and Astrid are through to the final. Straight sets. OK, here is your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Sergio Leone films as they could. Sergio Leone films, Richard. Yep, looking for any feature film given a general cinema release for which the uh, spaghetti western director Sergio Leone uh, is so famous. No short films and documentaries as always. So Sergio Leone films. I'm looking for the English names. OK, thank you, Richard. This time, Helen and Chris go first. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they see Very intense conference going on there. Right, we're going to go for for a few dollars more. For a few dollars more, yeah. say Helen and Chris. Stephen and Astrid. Mm. Um, yeah, we don't, we, we, we don't know. We don't know him. Um, but we're just going to go for a Western, and that would be The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. <laughs> the Good, The Bad and The Ugly. OK, in the order they were given, for a few dollars more from Helen and Chris, let's see if that's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Oh. Very good, 21. <laughs> Astrid, once again, faced with a subject she doesn't know, has a stab in the dark. So far, she's always stabbed pretty well in the dark. Let's see if she has this time as well. The good, the bad, the ugly. Let's see if it's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. She's done it again. Not bad at all, but that point goes to Helen and Chris. So after two questions, it is one apiece. Richard. Yeah, very good try, but there were a few answers you could have given. There's only one point this answer here, actually, which was a, a very early film, The Colossus of Rhodes, which is very different to his uh, later work. Fistful of Dynamite would have got you two. Uh, Once Upon a Time in America, three. Once Upon a Time in the West, five. Uh, and then the big three there, so we've had it for a few dollars more. Fistful of Dollars would have got you 22. And there's the good, the bad and the ugly. Very well done if you got those, especially Colossus of Rhodes. OK, thank you, Richard. Here is your third question. And whoever gets this question, obviously, whoever wins this point, is through to the final. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many African teams who played in the 2010 World Cup as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any of the African nations that played in the uh, 2010 World Cup finals. OK, Stephen and Astrid, you go first this time. Just a little deliberation here. OK. Um, we're going to go Cameroon. You're going to go Cameroon. Helen and Chris? Um, we're going to go for Ivory Coast. You're going to go for Ivory Coast. Yeah. OK. We have Cameroon from Stephen and Astrid. We have the Ivory Coast from Helen and Chris. OK, let's go with Cameroon first. Let's see if that's correct. And if it is, how many people said it? <laughs> 26. 26. Were you expecting a bit lower? I was just happy that it was there, to be You're honest. You're happy it was there. 26 is fantastic. It is pretty good. <laughs> you confident this is going to go lower? <laughs> <laughs> Not that confident. <laughs> OK, well, fingers crossed. Let's see. How many people said Ivory Coast? This to go into the final. People said Ivory Coast. Well done, you. That means you are through to the final. 2-1. Richard. Yeah, tough luck, Stephen and Astrid. You're really, really good players, but uh, you're caught out there. There were six African teams in the World Cup. One of them would have beaten Ivory Coast, and that was Algeria. Uh, there's Ivory Coast or Cote d'Ivoire with 15. Then Ghana, the quarter-finalist, with 16. Uh, the Super Eagles, Nigeria. Then Cameroon. And right at the top, uh, the hosts, of course, South Africa. Well done if you got all six. So, the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid, is Stephen and Astrid. Bad luck. 
Um, Bad luck. Yeah. Did you follow the World Cup? Yes. I knew Ivory Coast was one, and I thought... Uh, I thought it was more obvious. Yeah, I thought it was really obvious, so never mind. And uh, sadly, Sergio Leone, not your, uh, not your <laughs> no. favourite auteur of the film. Well, bad luck. It's been fantastic having you on the show. I'm sorry you haven't made it through to the final a second right. time, yeah, but yeah. Uh, you've been great contestants. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. But for Helen and Chris, it's time for our pointless final and the chance to win £3,750. Congratulations, Helen and Chris. You fought off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. <laughs> That's why you're here. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot, which, just in case you'd forgotten, at the end of today's show stands at £3,750. <laughs> OK, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that no one could think of. We've had three pointless answers today. All you need to do is find one more to go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category from these three options. Your choices are music festivals, universities, chemistry. Music Which? festivals, universities, chemistry. Well, I don't like that. No, that's the only right. thing is music. It's got music yeah, in it. Yeah. But uh, do we know any music festivals? Yeah, but at least it's music. Yeah? Yes. Do you want to go for that? Yes, because okay. you're good at music. Oh, no, I'm good at music, <laughs> like hits and things, but yes, not but for festivals. I'd rather go for your music festival. OK, right. You. And then it's your fault. <laughs> 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 right? OK, but don't... Uh... Right. OK. Music festivals. OK, music festivals <laughs> it is. All right, let's find out what the question is. And remember, it's your fault, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Glastonbury headliners as they could. Oh. Your fault, Chris. <laughs> Richard. Yep, we are looking for any artist who's been listed uh, as a headline act on the Friday, Saturday or Sunday of any Glastonbury festival since the year 2000. OK, <laughs> you now have up to one minute to come up with three okay. answers. <laughs> All you need is for just one of those answers to be pointless. OK, your 60 seconds start now. Is Paul Harris, but was he before two, 2000 or after? Was he before or, or after 2000? I have no idea. No. But I did see one called Jack Johnson. He was on this year's... He was so on the pyramid, though. Yes, I think so. Stitch, uh, right. I've never heard of him. Um, Stevie Wonder was on it, but I don't expect he'll be uh, pointless, no. would he? So... Paul McCartney was on Yes. Him, but he'd be quite high, he wouldn't would. he? And what about the White Stripes or somebody? All right, do yeah. you think so? I hope so. So we but, go for uh, White Stripes. Yes, seconds. we go for... Jack for Johnson. Jack Johnson. Mm -hmm. and do we try uh, Harris? Well, we don't know any more, do we? No. So, uh... No, I, I don't no, know. No, right. I don't know, so we'll go for that. OK, Shall you've got we? your three. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. stop the clocks. Right. We are looking for Glastonbury headliners. I now need your three answers. You give them, Chris. Right. Did we say Rolf Harris? Mm -hmm. Rolf Harris. Rolf Harris. Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson. And the White Stripes. And the White Stripes. Yes. Which of those do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? Well, it won't be Rolf Harris, would it? So, uh, Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson. So right. we'll put him third. Yeah. And which one should we put up first? Rolf Harris. Rolf Harris. Yeah. So, in that order, let's put them up on the board. Rolf Harris, White Stripes, Jack Johnson. There we are. OK, we were looking for Glastonbury headliners. This was your least confident answer. You only have to find one pointless answer. There might be a pointless answer in there. I'd really love it if there were. To win £3,750, just one of these has to be a pointless answer. OK, let's put your first one up. Rolf Harris, you're saying. Let's see if that's a correct answer. And if it is a correct answer, it just might be pointless. Let's hope it is. Let's see how many people said Rolf Harris. Yeah. Bad luck. Yeah. Sadly, Rolf Harris is an incorrect answer, so not a pointless answer. You only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. But Rolf Harris, you, that was a punt anyway, wasn't it? You weren't expecting him to be a, a pyramid stage headliner. You have two pretty good answers on the board, though. Your next answer is White Stripes. How confident are you in White Stripes? 
<laughs> Chris is the one I've not I heard just of them. Read, but I don't know where they were or whatever. <laughs> they might not even be in the pyramid. So they might have been. They might be. I hope they are. Yes. I hope they were. I I'll bet jump they were for joy. Really. Yes. I bet you will. As well. <laughs> I've seen you do it. I've seen you do it on, on lesser occasions than this. <laughs> Please, White Stripes have headlined at Glastonbury since the year 2000, because if I don't see Chris jump for joy, it's going to break <laughs> my heart. Right, this has to be a pointless answer for you to win the jackpot. OK, we're going to say White Stripes. Let's see if it's correct. And if it is, let's see Chris jump for joy. <laughs> and then let's see how many people said it. White Stripes. It's correct! Oh. <laughs> this for £3,750. Down it goes, White Stripes. Chris, oh. what a fantastic no jump for joy. answer. Sorry. <laughs> alas, alas, you were one point away. You were one point away from £3,750. Oh. What would you do with £3,750? Well, I always said that I was going to take helicopter flying lessons. Such <laughs> a good <laughs> idea. It was all for that. But, <laughs> so we better not we win better it. Not <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not coming with you if you do. <laughs> Right, but that was your second answer. That wasn't even the one you had the most faith in. Oh. This is the one you had the most faith in, Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson, your last final answer. Your last crack at the jackpot of £3,750. We were looking for Glastonbury headliners. Let's see if it is correct. Let's see how many people said Jack Johnson. Never mind. Never mind. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's an incorrect answer. You, did that. <laughs> you didn't manage to find that all important, pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot, which rolls over to the next show. But you have been fantastic, and you do get to take home our pointless trophy. Yes! See, there we are. <laughs> Um, Richard, what answers should they have gone for? Uh, well, uh, that's very well played and very bad luck. Jack Johnson and Rolf Harris both played at Glastonbury 2010. Neither of them headlined, but they were oh. both there. White Stripes headlined in 2005. There were four pointless answers here. One of them very surprising, I think. Let's take a look at them. Uh, Basement Jacks and Chemical Brothers, both pointless, but Oasis, who headlined oh. twice. If you'd said Oasis, mm. you'd just won the money. Right, yes. And one other act, and that was The Kings of oh, Leon. Yes. Uh, would have been a pointless answer as well. So uh, very, very well done if you've got uh, any of those four at home. Thanks very much, Richard. Well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to Helen and Chris. Uh, it has been fantastic having you on the show. You've been brilliant contestants. Thank, Thank you so you. much for playing. Thank you. So nobody's won our jackpot today, so it rolls over, which means on the next show we'll be playing for £4,750. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.